Hey guys, welcome back here on the channel. Today we're going to be continuing the discussion last time where we were talking about how to play around a scale and I explained basically how to apply the Nashville number system that a lot of us use to a scale and how that kind of translates into a melody line. Um, but what I didn't talk about last time is how to use little tips and tricks you have to really spice up your melody line, right? So we talked about Blue Ridge Cabin Home and G. that it was really important to understand we've got a measure of G, a measure of C, a measure of G, and then another measure of G. So what, uh, or D and then G. So what you can really do around that, uh, the possibilities are, you know, here and as far as you can think, the possibilities are there. Um, but the key is just to stick to the scale uh, that the song is in. So what I'm going to do now is pick up the pace up a little bit. We're going to do Blue Ridge Cabin Home again. We're gonna do it in G, and except one time I'm gonna to stick to the melody line, and one time I'm gonna ignore the melody line completely, and I'm going to only play scales. And then the third time I'm gonna play, I'm gonna think about the melody, but play scales where bass notes are still based in the melody. So let's do that. So first time around, standard melody. scales along with the measure. One more time. So all I did that time was combine the scales with the, um, the scales of the chord of the measure we were in and then I kind of would overlap a little bit. Um, just to make sure they all lined up together in the end. Because otherwise you might end up up here and start another scale somewhere else. So just kind of make sure they all line up. This time I'm going to do this a similar thing. I'm going to play around the scales, but I'm going to keep in mind where those bass notes uh, uh, are, are supposed to be. So let's do it again. So the difference this time is that when it came to a new measure, I made sure that I was playing the melody line bass note. For example, is when we start that third measure where it goes to D, where I wandered, I made sure I hit that A note, wandered. So again, I, I might go. Those crucial notes that we talked about last time that I think really define a melody line like that, I was making sure I was intermingling those along with the scales. And then sometimes I might uh, even inter uh, mingle some licks in there that I pick up from other musicians and other instruments, that is, um, and can be as well. So uh, an example of that is playing around couplets, and couplets, of course, are like two notes together. Sometimes you get uh, three notes together, and, and that would be a chord, but um, sometimes we're also going to be playing around those as well. So the first thing to do is identify, we've got a ton of couplets here. We got, technically that's a couplet, one here, we've got a few there, one there. One there, one there, one there. So I just played all the G, C, and D couplets that really quickly came to my head. Of course, there's this one's like here, and there's C couplet there. Um, so there's a ton of couplets that you can play around. But now let's take a break and let's play a few of those couplets in there. So that last lick there is kind of a Bill Monroe lick, kind of playing around the chord of G here. So learning stuff like that can be really helpful, um, and it really can 
uh, spice up your playing because you can add it to a lot of different songs as long as you know where it goes and how, how it can tie into the uh, standard melody line. Um, and so let's go ahead and swap chords here to A. And we're going to do a similar thing that we did last time. We were talking about hammer-ons and couplets just a few minutes ago, and now we're going to kind of apply those to the same song, Blue Ridge Cabin Home, and I'm going to do the same thing I did last time where I started very simply with a basic melody line and got a little bit more complicated each time. Every time I started implementing more off-scale notes, more blues scale notes, and I also started adding more hammer-ons, uh, licks from other musicians, and couplets. So let's go ahead and do an example of that. I'll do it plenty slow so you can go ahead and play along if you'd like. So there you have it. There's an example of uh, how you can kind of um, take a simple melody line and then add stuff that you're picking up along the way. We added some couplets. We added some some uh, hammer-ons and pull-offs. Uh, and we even went up the neck here, and you were using high octaves, but but a lot of times we were sticking within that major scale. So I guess your best friend here is knowing your scales, learning licks based around the scales, and keep in mind, hey, you know what? We're in, uh, we have a measure full of A, so I can do almost whatever I want in that A measure. Oh, we're going to D here. I can do almost whatever I want in that D measure. Going to E. Um, and while you're in that measure, it's really up to you. I think that's what's great about bluegrass. Uh, is it's really up to you what you want to make of that break. So I'll take you out with uh, another rendition of Blue Ridge Cabin Home here, but I'm going to do it in the traditional chord of B flat, where a lot of people do it at. I'm going to do it slow, so maybe you can pick up something along the way. A lot of people play this one in, in B and B flat. So maybe you can pick up something as well.
Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you check out part one. If you enjoyed this video series, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe here on the channel. I plan to upload more mandolin tutorials here in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.